Hey, it's him here. This is yet another snippet from my Tableau desktop crash course. In this one, I explain the difference between Tableau desktop and Tableau public. I'll go into it with quite a lot of detail. This is actually part of the crash course, so go ahead and check that out. But as ever, let's get stuck in. Now let's look at desktop and public, okay? Now, to download them, uh, Tableau Public is a little bit funny, um, and I'll, I'll start with Tableau Public first because that's the version that most people can go ahead and do right now for free. There's two ways of using Tableau Public. Um, the first way is to use it here in the browser. The second way is to download it. Now, most people will tell you to download it, and if you want to kind of simulate an experience that you'd have at work, I would say also go ahead and download it as well. That's the best way to actually experience it. And if I go to the Create dropdown up here, select Download Tableau Desktop Public Edition. It takes me to a page. Uh, it asks me to sign in if I'm not signed in. And if I click the button, uh, it always asks for a few bits of information. This is just marketing. Uh, I can never get out of this. But go ahead, install, um, put, put your details in here. You can put like a um, like an alias if you want to and download the application. That will allow you to download the software for Windows and Mac. Once you've done that, run the installer. There's nothing to set up other than just literally clicking OK, agreeing with the terms and conditions and letting that run. And then once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. You'll have the software ready to run. If you want to use it in the browser instead, if I go back to the home page, all you need to do is go ahead and sign in. So let me go ahead and do that. And once I'm signed in, you'll notice that I actually have a profile. So my profile uh, picture is just up here. If you're new, I think it walks you through the experience a little bit. And once you're signed in, what I actually encourage people to do is don't, don't go and try and build something straight away. Do something a little bit more crazy, which is go find some of the trending visualizations right now. Uh, Priya Padam here is a colleague of mine at the Information Lab. So if I actually go to her visualization right now, any visualization which the author has made available to download, if you go to this button just right here, you can actually open it here in the browser and start to edit it straight away. So I can go ahead and click on that button, make a copy, and I'm immediately in the web editing experience for Tableau Public. And actually, this is the same web editing experience you get for Tableau Desktop if you use it in Tableau Cloud or in Tableau Server. And check this out. I can even go into the visualization. I can open it up. And I can even see exactly how this has been built. This is just such a powerful capability. And so this is how easy it is. Uh, we've, we've been streaming for such a short amount of time, but I've already shown you how you can get free access into Tableau just by using Tableau Public to go and see how other people are using their visualizations. Now, granted, this is a little bit intimidating, okay? We've got a lot of uh, things going on here. But later on today, we'll actually build this exact chart we won't have it looking as nice as prayers done here because that formatting takes a bit of time. So this, we're not going to do that. There's no time in a crash course, but we will build this map um, with these circles and I'll show you how to do all of that. And everything here should look a lot less intimidating by the time we're done. Okay. So let me just go back and close this. Uh, if you want to know what I'm doing, I'll just try and annotate it a bit more. I'll go ahead and close this up here at the top. And I don't want to publish this because this is not my work and I don't want people to think it's my work. It's Priya's hard work and uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and create anything, you know, go ahead, edit something, but you can also just go to create here at the top, select web authoring, and it takes you to a blank canvas. And the blank canvas is great because you can then go ahead, upload the data from your computer. If you've got a text file, a CSV, Excel files, these are all possible just through this, okay? Now, that's the web experience of using Tableau Public. What about the desktop experience? How do you go ahead and install uh, the software uh, on your machine? Well, you go ahead and download it and install it. And then once you've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swipe over to my Windows machine because I have my Windows machine just behind my desk and I'm remote desktop into it. And over there, I actually have the different versions of Tableau already running, so you can see the difference. So the first thing I'll do is open up Tableau Public. You can just install the software, and when you've done that, you can see it just becomes available to you to install over here. So you can just go ahead and click on that, and you're pretty much good to go. And when you open it up, you're met with this interface. And this is actually the classic Tableau interface when you open it up for the first time. Whether you're using Tableau Desktop or Tableau Public, it's all the same. On the left-hand side, you have what's called the connection pane. The connection pane allows you to connect to data. In the middle, we have the open pane. And this open pane is a bit different in Tableau Public because 
Um, what it shows you is some of your most recently worked on work. It's a bit like your recent documents in Google Drive or on your computer. The other thing that it also shows you is some of the work that you've pinned. So once you start to do a lot of work, you can actually pin them to this location so they're always visible as well. And then very lastly, the last thing we have on the right hand side is the discover pane. This discover pane uh, essentially links you to a couple of things. Um, some getting started resources, which are just covered here at the top. Uh, these pretty much show you how to use Tableau. They're going to be hopefully just as good as my tutorials, uh, if not better, because the people who put them together make the products. So hopefully they'd be, um, you know, much better. You have a link to visit the day. Now we we were just on Tableau Public. Visit the day is essentially a visualization that's been voted as a community favorite or has been selected to be showcased for the community on that day. And sometimes they come through here in the product. And the very last thing is resources. So these are things like. Um, the Tableau blog, uh, sample data sets you can get stuck in with, and the current status of Tableau Online and Tableau Cloud also available there. So sample data sets is really good because it's a really good way of understanding how everything works and you can sort of bring it together as well, okay? So that's the interface. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how is this different from Tableau Desktop? And this is actually the best place to show you the big difference, okay? Uh, when I go ahead and select more, you'll see that I get only three options here. So if I wanted to connect to a database such as, let's say, Microsoft SQL Server, or I wanted to connect to something like uh, Snowflake, that's not going to be available here because Tableau Public is limited. It only lets you connect to uh, flat files, which are these files here at the top. So Excel, text, JSON, Microsoft Access, PDF, spatial files, and statistical files, essentially any file on your machine. And then the servers it lets you connect to are Google Drive, OData, and Web Data Connectors. Essentially, these are basically other places where you might store some of these flat files and or web data that just doesn't make sense to put behind a price wall because you know, Tableau doesn't build those connections. So that's the limitation here initially with data connections. If I go ahead and uh, close that option, the other limitation is if I go over, let's say I go over to the data tab, you'll see uh, you'll see that I have very few limited options up here at the top. And when we go over to Tableau Desktop, you'll see that you get a much bigger range of options. And one of the things you can't do is save to your desktop. So if I click on this little icon here on the very top left hand side, let me just uh, highlight that a bit more. When I click on that icon, what it does is it switches to the visualization building uh, setup essentially. And that allows me to see the full range of options still in Tableau Public. But now if I go here and try and save the document, it's not gonna let me save it to the computer. So here, it only lets you save to Tableau Public. So that is the limitation of Tableau Public in this particular instance. It's not going to let me save to my desktop machine. That said, if I go to server, it will, um, it will show me the options that I would expect to see, but in order to save this anywhere, I'm always going to need to go back here and select Save to Tableau Public or Save to Tableau Public As, which allows you to rename the file or you know write over an existing file. So those are the core limitations of Tableau Public. Everything else works exactly as you'd expect. There are like some tiny, tiny quirks. For example, the behavior with Google Docs is slightly different in public versus desktop. Again, that's an intermediate thing. We don't need to worry about it, okay? So that is Tableau Public, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little Tableau icon in the top left again to go back to this window. The only reason I'm clicking there now is because I haven't connected to any data, so that's the way to switch between the windows by just clicking that icon on the top. Right, let's switch to Tableau Desktop and show you how that's different. So let's go ahead and go down to Tableau Desktop, which is just over here. Now, immediately, you can see there's a lot more going on. Uh, in my connection window on the left, we now get the full breakdown of things you can connect to. So we have the files that we had before. These are just here. We have the server-based connections, and we also have what are called saved data sources. And saved data sources are just things that have been saved for convenience. They're not necessarily uh, data sources that kind of get, you know, uh, organizations can put in, in that folder for you. It's essentially just an easy place to put things you work on very frequently, a bit like your desktop, but you can put them there so they're very easy to access. We'll, we'll talk about that maybe in an intermediate uh, session instead, but don't worry about them today. Um, the server-based connections are a lot broader, so you'll definitely see that this list is a lot more impressive. And the thing to point out here is that you might have seen that a few of these loaded once the window opened. So these options here 
loaded once the window had opened fully. And that's because these actually live on another part of Tableau called the Tableau Exchange. Think of it as like a marketplace, except for right now, everything is free. So it's kind of like a weird marketplace where everything's free. At some point, they're going to start selling something. So for now, these are all free connectors made by these companies and or Tableau, and you can go ahead and use them alongside all these other connectors. So I'm pretty certain you'll find your database in this list. If you don't find your database in this list, what's most commonly used to connect to those databases is sometimes uh, ODBC or JDBC connector. Essentially, it's a uh, open source way of connecting to certain data sources using a certain protocol. And uh, the other option is the web data connector. If it's web-based data, you might instead use a web data connector to connect to those sources. But pretty much everything else is going to be in this list. And if it doesn't exist, well, um, typically either someone has built an ODBC connector or there's going to be a connector down here that lets you connect to it. So pretty much everything is covered. Okay, so let me go ahead and minimize this list because it's quite a daunting list. And <laughs> to be honest with you, most people, when, when you open Tableau first time, don't try and connect to a database. Just connect to the sample data source that's being given to you. But we'll get to that in a second. If I go to the bottom, you'll see something called accelerators. Now, I don't know why Tableau tries to confuse people, but accelerators are just templates. Think of them as pre-built dashboards that you can use to uh, you know, accelerate your work. Essentially, someone's done the work for you, so you don't have to. Except for the fact that these three dashboards here were never built with that in mind. These three dashboards are actually sample workbooks. The best way to think of these sample workbooks from a, let's say from a professional perspective, is there are a good benchmark for understanding how things should work in Tableau when it comes to speed and performance. So if you open one of these three workbooks, let's go ahead and do that now. I'll open up the Superstore workbook. If you click on them, it opens them up in another window. If you open one of these up and your laptop or computer is really struggling to work with these uh, specific dashboards, it probably means your laptop or computer isn't appropriately specced, and that happens really rarely. But if these are slow, your whole experience is going to be slow. But if these are working fast, they're interactive, they're working quickly, you're clicking on them and things are happening like you'd expect a normal tool to work, then things are working pretty well. Now, right now, this is taking a bit longer because I'm on an M1 Mac and you know everything's a bit weird. Actually, no, this is on Windows, so it's just taking longer. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, this should just work. So for example, when I hover over these uh, data points, I should get nice, fast tool tips. When I click on them, the whole visualization should react. Um, you should get a nice sort of snappy experience switching between the tabs. And of course, we haven't published this up to the browser, but if you were to publish this to the browser, generally speaking, you should be seeing roughly the same sort of performance. So that's why these are a good benchmark. Again, I don't want to confuse you too much by clicking around and doing a bunch of different things. I just want to show you what to expect when it comes to performance and load times and how things should work. Okay. Let's go ahead and actually close this because we don't, uh, I've actually ended up uh, opening this again, so that's fine. What we'll do is we'll keep this open for now. We'll keep it here. We don't need this window for the next step. But if I go back to the connection window, just by clicking on that icon again at the top, you can see that we have the accelerators still here on the bottom. And uh, you can now see we have an item here in the open pane. Now, when I hover over it, you have this uh, little pin icon that you can click on. It's really, really small. I'll try and highlight it here for you right there. That keeps this workbook in this position. So essentially, this won't move uh, anywhere. If anything gets opened, that will always stay on that top row. If you have a lot of them, you can arrange them as well. You can move them around uh, just to sort of get things nice and tidy. Now, if you want more templates, you can go over to this right-hand side and select more accelerators templates. And when you do that, you'll actually find that there have been some dashboards that have been made that already try and answer certain questions. And actually, just like we did with Tableau Public, where we went to find different dashboards you can work with, here you can go and find dashboards that you can actually use at work that connect to things that you might be familiar with. For example, Salesforce. Uh, maybe you're in a finance team and you want to go and see what other corporate finance teams are building. The only word of caution I'll say to you is that some of these dashboards have been built by, you know, people, everyday people in the community that build fantastic work. And you can tell because they look really, really good. And some of them, let's just say that the jury is out on whether they look good or not. But the work that's been done on the connection has been fantastic. So they are set up correctly and you can really generally trust how they've brought the data models together 
to support the visualizations that you want to build. So if I, let's say I, I want to search for a dashboard that talks about a wealth investment or insurance broking. So let's go ahead and search insurance. Uh, I can't type, so let's go search insurance. Insurance, can I, is that actually correct? No matching content, insurance. I can't spell, can I? Let's just type this. Let's type in sure. No, no, no matching content. There's nothing on insurance. That's so weird. Okay, let's go to corporate finance instead and just look at what's here. So the most recent one here is this executive KPI dashboard uh, by Bistry. I actually know who built this, uh, but it's a really, I think it's a really nice dashboard. I think it has actually been, this is one of the sort of um, better aesthetics that you get on the, on the uh, Tableau exchange. And this one's actually customizable. You can click on it and do a bunch of stuff with it, download it and use it. And uh, it's got a how to use page and everything. So you can really kind of do some awesome things with it. If I scroll back up and I go back, let's let's find one more. Uh, let's go back here. Let's find one more. Um, let's just go back down. Let's go see what else do we have. These are all a little bit a little bit strange. Let's go somewhere else. Let's see if well we we do have an insurance section. I don't know why it wasn't coming up in the search. If I scroll down, um, I'm going to looking for these ones because these are the ones, the information I built where I work. So, of course, I'd look for them. <laughs> so let's go uh, look at this insurance underwriter uh, performance. I also know who built this. this. is a colleague of mine called Ellen Blackbird, uh, Blackburn even. Um, her work is fantastic. She's just really got a great eye for design. And these are dashboards that really excel at showing you what's possible with Tableau. So if you want to use these, absolutely get stuck in and get involved. Anyway. I'm here to teach you how to use the tool, not how to use templates. So the very last thing is the Discover pane on the right-hand side. The only way this is different from Tableau Public is we have a little bit more of a training section, slightly longer list of resources, and you often get updates from Tableau Marketing on the bottom right. So you can actually uh, sometimes see things like conference announcements and so on and so forth in there. Now, if you're really sort of advanced in your organization, it is possible to change this whole right-hand side section to point to a web page instead. So in this right-hand side section, you can actually point to a specific page in your organization. And so you can put information for people who use Tableau straight away. Maybe it's guides, maybe it's information about who runs Tableau, uh, status updates, all of that can live on the right-hand side of that. And again, I've done a video explaining how that works and it's really, really good to see, okay?